Hey everyone, and welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're taking a look at the Firebase environment configuration for your cloud functions. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It would definitely help us out a lot. But without any further ado, let's jump into it. So if you didn't know already, Firebase Cloud Functions actually have an additional feature for Firebase and configs, which allow you to utilize some Firebase CLI commands to store environment, uh, environment config data in Firebase on the server-side environment. So many times you'll be using APIs in your server-side code, like in your Cloud Functions, that require the use of secret API keys. Take Stripe, for example, you have to use your secret account key to initialize Stripe in your cloud functions. You can also utilize the Firebase hosting environment configs for things like webhook URLs. Uh, Elliot mentioned the Stripe example, which they also have webhook URLs that you might need to add to the environment configs as well as different uh, secret keys. And obviously these keys and webhook URLs need to be hidden as much as possible. Uh, because if you're storing your code in a public repo and open source, you don't want people to be able to read these keys, so it's just a really nice feature to have for security reasons. So the Firebase CLI gives you several useful commands that you can use to set, unset, list, and clone these environment variables for your Firebase project server-side environment. To use the Firebase config, all you have to do is install the Firebase CLI. If you have not done this already, you can use the command npm install g firebase tools, and that will get you up and running with the Firebase CLI. So to get started, if you haven't logged into the Firebase CLI tool before, well, you can use the Firebase login command to do that. And it's just a Firebase login, you hit enter, and then you'll select which Google account you want to sign in with. Now we're going to list all of our different Firebase projects with the Firebase projects colon list command. And we'll just use this to actually select a specific project to use um, for this example. So now we just need to set the active project for our terminal environment and you can do that by using the Firebase use project name command. And you're just going to replace the angled brackets and the word project name with your project name and you'll be good to go. So now that we have the active Firebase project selected, we can now start adding these environment configs. As we mentioned earlier in the episode, we can use these configs for like Stripe, where we need a secret key. So to actually add these environment configs, we can use the command Firebase functions colon config colon set. And then we'll give it a name for the key and that is stripe.secret. And of course we'll have an equal sign in there and then we'll pass in a string that will be the actual key. For now we're just gonna use ABC123 as an example. So anytime you change the Firebase environment config with adding a key or cloning a key or deleting a key, you're gonna have to redeploy to the Firebase functions to actually have those affect your server-side project in the real world. Now that we have a Firebase environment config set, we can actually use the command Firebase functions colon config colon get to see what configurations we have. And as you can see, we have our Stripe secret key in there. You can see that it kind of looks a little bit like JSON, and that's because it is JSON. And this JSON will contain all our keys and values that we set with the previous Firebase functions config set command. So if you notice the structure of this JSON, it separates all of your key names on the periods that you use, like we did earlier. We did stripe.secret. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna split that on the dot and make that, that secret string as an inner object. And so if you wanted to add more key values to this stripe object or even to the secret object you could just do stripe dot another key name equals whatever and it would show up right next to secret so just to demonstrate that we added another key called another key to stripe so we did firebase functions colon config colon set and we called this one stripe dot another key and then we gave it the value of one two three abc and you can see it's right next to our secret key so to actually use these environment configs that you're setting in your terminal in your server-side cloud function code you can use functions dot config 
followed by the name of the, the key that you entered into your config. So ours was stripe.secret. And so the full command is functions.config.stripe.secret. And this will automatically replace that with the value that you set in your environment config. Now, the functions in this command is just a variable that represents our Firebase functions node module import. Uh, obviously, you can change this to a different name if you're importing it differently. If for whatever reason you need to update a specific environment config value that you have, you can just use the set uh, command again, the Firebase functions colon config colon set, and just use that same key name. This In this instance, we have stripe.secret, and then you can have your updated value. And this will just overwrite whatever value you had previously for that specific key. And if you need to delete a specific key from your Firebase config, you can use the Firebase functions config unset, and this will just remove that specific key um, if you need to do that. So what's also great and really handy is the clone command. So if you have config keys set up in another project that you want to bring over to your current project, all you need to do is run the clone command on screen, which is Firebase functions colon config colon clone hyphen hyphen from and then the name of your project. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring over the entire environment config that's set in this project that you're targeting, and it's gonna clone it over exactly into the project that you have active in this terminal. And that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and learned something, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We also have a podcast. It's called the Small Batch Devs Podcast, and you can find it on most of your podcasting platforms. Um, but that's pretty much it. We really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace.